Science technicians are an integral part of the modern classroom, but their professional development is often overlooked. Today, however, that state of affairs is about to change for two technicians at Manor School in Poppleton. Simon Quinnell is professional development leader at the National Science Learning Centre in York. His challenge is to transform the working lives of Sue Smith and Julia Raper. When you're a teacher, you often, during your PGCE, you go into schools, you're given training to cope with children, how to deal with them and everything else. For a technician, you get absolutely no training whatsoever before starting as a technician. You don't have to do any courses. Sometimes the minimum qualification is a GCSE in a science subject. An ex-school technician himself, Simon will be watching a day in the women's lives in order to tailor make a training package to best suit their needs. That will be Julie's job for the day. She will spend all day washing up and we have more constructive things for her to do than that. It's the beginning of another routine day at Manor School and Sue and Julia are getting ready for the usual round of prepping demos, chasing down textbooks and washing glassware. You there's need a, to clear some stuff off the trolley. The pair have worked together for over a year now and have a lot in common. In actual fact, we're both... <laughs> We're both the same age, we're both born on the same day, both left-handed yeah. and both got children called Sam and both done both a really, Sam. we've added a really obscure course. I've never met anybody else that's ever done this course and Julia had done it. Well, Spooky. <laughs> Separated at birth. <laughs> She's lovely, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'll go away and see you can cut things out later. <laughs> no, she's very kind and helpful because I do get stuck on things, don't I? Do you know, all my, all my life, so I was victimised to my handwriting. Do you know, I don't know what it says. But the cosy world of the prep room is I about to be changed forever. Uh, the school's likely to expand from 640 to 900, and we're looking to take on more technician hours, and that will be a greater level of responsibility for both the, both the technicians. And the idea of actually fully utilising the technician skills so that they can actually get out there and demonstrate uh, the lessons to me is a very exciting and a natural development within the life of the school. I'm really, really looking forward to the new school. The school has big ambitions to offer a dynamic modern science curriculum. And this means the technicians will be required to play a much more active role in classroom science. Julia is going to be taken on as a full-time technician, while Sue's job will change to include a lot more classroom demonstrating. It's vital that both of them get further training if they are to fulfil their enhanced roles within the school. It's a totally different thing than any other science you'll ever do because we all have our own specialties and most schools and you expect it to be all things to all people. Anything from uh, physics, biology, chemistry. Mm. I prefer the biology because I, like Sue, so I've got more you know, yeah. experience in that, more history and the chemistry is not too bad but we're both as bad as each other with physics so we do struggle a bit with physics. <laughs> Although they both have previous experience of working in labs, being a school technician requires a completely different range of skills. Even though I've done lab work before, doing this is totally different. But you're obviously competent in a lab, you know what you're doing. Oh yeah, yeah, but it's just the, the special, like say the physics and lots of the courses that they do. I've been a science technician since 1983. I've worked, started working in medical research, a private company doing genetic toxicology testing. I've done market research. I used to be an Anselmer's lady and I was in one of the top ten in, in the Yorkshire region. <laughs> so, Julia, you, how long have you been here? About a year? Two, two years. Two years. Started September, um, September 4. Presumably you enjoy it. Yeah. It's nice coming to work and it's a nice atmosphere. And Both Julia and Sue obviously enjoy their work. They certainly don't do it for the money. Rates of pay for science technicians don't compare with those in industry or those for teachers. Oh, well, I don't know much about myself. Sue so knows more than me. I'm on scale one, aren't I? Is that right? Yeah. I think, is it for clerical as well? It's not just scientific stuff, or is it? No, they rationalised about 10, 15 years ago before I went into schools, they did actually rationalise the pay scales. Traditionally, back in the 60s and 70s, uh, technicians' pay was pegged to be at a level of an NQT teacher which would be absolutely fine, but then as the 70s rolled into the 80s, um, I think the, count, the pay councils were abolished, and that's when we really started to, to fall behind. I think it would surprise some of the teachers if they actually knew how little we got paid. It's no secret that there's a shortage of science teachers, and a technician demonstrator is an obvious asset to any science department. Sue feels that more could be done to address the serious shortfall in science technicians. 
the government white paper at the moment, which I actually read the other week, makes a lot of mention of science uh, teacher recruitment and retention and paying them bonuses. I think science technicians possibly got one mention um, right at the very, very bottom. Science needs science technicians. You realise very early on that if you're going to get the very best out of your science department, a, a vital part of the team are the science technicians. They're absolutely essential to make the whole team operation work. No science teacher in the right mind would be anything other than supportive and uh, um, encouraging of their science team. So I'm going to make some urine. So we can actually, if I'd had more notice, I would have done this properly, but I'm just going to squish a, a tea bag in some cold water. And it's convinced enough for the kids, especially if you drink it at the end. So I'm just going to quickly... Isn't that amazing? Instant way. And you can always uh, try and persuade the kids that you've actually just been and made it and then drink it and they really, really go, oh, it's quite fun. I've just been and made that. <laughs> <laughs> I really enjoy being, helping the kids and whatever, and you were considered as much a member of staff as any of the teachers. So in consequence, we have a discipline scheme, but we also have a reward scheme. You can put the children in detention. Put her down, you don't know where she's been. <laughs> We're a member of staff just as much as teachers and we, we, we get the same respect off the children. Do your tie up, top button, top button tie. I'm just going to go and have a look at my list and see what we've got to go out next. Time for some first impressions of what needs to be done from science guru Simon. Well, you can see that Sue doesn't lack confidence necessarily in talking to te teachers and Julia and students when she's walking around. But Julia is a different kettle of fish. Excuse me, please. How, how much interaction do you have with, with the kids? Because um, I mean, if you're in... As little as possible, I think it's the right... No, I don't, I don't tend to see a lot of them, really. We don't tend to go in, I don't tend to go in the classrooms when the teaching's on. Is that a preference or is that... Just... That's a preference, yes. <laughs> no, I mean, the kids here are, are fine. You know, they're OK, but it's just easier. And tell me about demonstrating. I don't. <laughs> <laughs> it's, not something I've, it's not something I've done, put it that way. Would you like to or are you happy not? I'm happy not to. I'm happy to be in the background, really. So what does Simon make of Julia? Because I think she's only working um, limited hours a week, so therefore she's not had enough time to actually build the technical skills. All of, often all she seems to be doing is, as we've seen there, chasing around for textbooks. But she also seems to be just washing up. By contrast, Sue likes nothing better than to get up in front of class and demonstrate her science skills. I feel that the technician's role is evolving. I like getting involved in the kids and I like doing that and it's really, really gratifying when the kids come and say, oh, miss, that was fantastic, thank you. I get from that that she wants to learn more about doing demonstrations and going into the classroom, um, especially chemistry, and she's a bit wary of physics and helping to perform physics and helping the teacher do it as well. Um, so I think with Sue, it would be quite easy, really, to just help her build confidence in using physics and chemistry equipment for demonstrations. I don't think that is as big a problem. And also, if we help Sue to do it and build her confidence doing it, and um, maybe that would lead on to Julia as well. And do you think you could get Julia to demonstrate by the end of the week? I don't know. That's quite a hard thing to judge. Um, we could m maybe get Julia to help with the demonstrations in front of a class, but trying to build somebody's confidence and their abilities up to actually stand up in a full class and talk to a group, large group is very hard. Simon has his ideas about what Sue and Julia need, but what do they think? Uh, I'm looking forward to I do like new things. I do like, you know, it's, it's quite interesting. Be interesting to see what they get. Personally, I hope not the Van de Graaff, my least favorite bit of equipment, because it never worked properly. How are you feeling about tomorrow? Slightly nervous. <laughs> of what? I'm not quite sure what we're doing, to be honest. That's the thing, so... But I'm sure once we get there, we'll be fine. Are you looking forward to it? Yeah. It'll be a nice day out. <laughs> <laughs> no screaming kids. No screaming kids and get a nice lunch. And Simon has to take into consideration some other views as well. Those of head teacher Brian Crosby. The best outcome would be that the, the technicians could start to feel confident to utilise the skills they've got already uh, and to develop other skills that they might not realise that they, that they have. Um, I'm, not trying to teach, I'm not trying to turn the technicians into something that they're not. They might not feel confident to be a classroom practitioner, uh, a classroom teacher, but 
uh, if they have got the ability in there, I'd like to see it developed to the, to the highest level that we possibly can within the school. It's the day of training and Sue and Julia arrive at the National Science Learning Centre. Good morning. Good morning. Hi, I'm, hi, I'm Simon Pennell, the senior technician. Fantastic. Hi, Julia. Hi, Julia. I'm Simon. Nice to meet you. Um, so you were here at the National Science Learning Centre, and we're going to do some training workshops with you today. So, should we get started and yeah. walk into the labs? Ooh. To get Sue and Julia in the mood, Simon decides to kick things off with a bang. It's about 40 mils of propan 2R, which is just add it to, pour out the excess solution. Put this on the floor. Oh my God! What was it that you actually wanted to do today? It'd be nice to have some new um, chemistry demonstrations, really. OK, well, we've got yeah. a couple of good chemistry demonstrations. Fantastic. We're also going to bring that van to go off and try a few new things okay. with that. And Julia, what we are hoping to do today is actually do a bit of soldering so you can actually solder some equipment. Yeah. Um, and also some, a bit of glass bending as well. Yeah, I've never done that. That would be good, yeah. Helen is one of our experienced technicians here. She's been a senior technician in a local school for some years. So she'll show you some soldering techniques and what to do. Whilst Julia gets down to some soldering with Helen, Simon and Sue start to develop some chemistry. What we're going to do first is the methane mamba. Fantastic. Now, you have to do this with mains gas. It has to be methane. Yeah. Um, some schools have bottled gas and you can't do with that because that's heavier than air. And, and it will, sinks. It sinks. And also, some other gases are a lot more volatile. Yeah. So you can only do this with natural gas. Okay. So what we've got is our cup um, drinks bottle with a bit of glass tubing. And we've got a solution of 70% water, um, some 20% washing up liquid and the rest glycerol. So if we turn the gas on, there we go. Okay. Now I'll put my goggles on. So what yeah. we want to do is just have a column of bubbles going up. So what we do is, I always find it's easier to have a lip bunts and flame somewhere. Should I stand back? I think you're fine there okay. because the flash from the, pro, uh, from the methane is quite fast. So what we do is we just, with a clean bit, we let it rise up and then we just ignite it like that. One other thing I just want to show you with this is if you roll your sleeves up. And it's going to be too nasty, is it? No, this is going to be fine. This is something that's quite safe yeah. as long as you roll your sleeves up, have your goggles on. Yeah. Um, and the most important thing is, is to wet your hands. Scoop up what the bubbles on the top there in your fine. hands, yep. just like this. This is something that I would recommend only teachers and technicians do. I wouldn't recommend doing it with students okay. necessarily. And there we go. And could you feel, you can feel the Sue heat. proves to be a dab hand at the methane mamba, but how's Julia getting on with her soldering? Now normally, so soldering is probably done in the prep room. Strip the end of the wire really cleanly. Yeah, have a practice. Lean it against the wire, OK? We leave it there for a while. So I'm going to put a plug on this one. OK? Yeah. Do you want to have a go? I'll have a go. <laughs> OK. So what we have here is a flame test. Yeah. I'm using this camping stove. So what we do, and this is lithium chloride. Okay. You just spray it into the flames. What you can do is you can turn the lights down a little bit. The flat. So mm. do you want to have a go? I certainly do. Strontium's, Strontium's are probably the nicest colour. There we go. Scarlet. It's a lovely red. Now I know what my teachers will do. Well. They'll go. Like that. Yes. <laughs> and you can see it's quite dangerous. I can see why. So I mean, they have to, to, again, you, when you go back and you actually tell them this method, yeah. the best thing is to actually show them themselves and just yeah. warn of the consequences yeah. of actually doing it too yeah. much. This that makes way. things, yeah, that's right. Back more. to Julia, and the soldering seems to be coming on a treat. Blow on that a bit, because that will be quite warm. That's OK. So that's it. Well done. Do you just do you test them afterwards, or do you, I suppose you know well, they're going to work. <laughs> I know they're going to work. <laughs> Julia did a really good job for her first time. Um, it can be quite a nervous thing to do because you're scared of the heat and everything else. But I think she's she's done a, a very good job. This, this looks really interesting. Actually, everything seems to be going well. But Simon has something a little more challenging lined up for Sue: the ammonia fountain. So what we'll start off doing is we've got. Oops. Basically, a round bottom flask. Yeah. Put this syringe in through the rubber band. 
And then what we need to do is if we go over to the fume cupboard. Yeah, okay. Now yeah. what we're going to do is heat the ammonia right. so it starts to boil and evaporate into ammonia gas. Yeah. If we use the piece of litmus paper as it's now boiling, yeah. this should turn blue. Wow. There we go. So we're actually producing yeah. ammonia gas, which is alkaline. Put this on here now. So we should now have dry ammonia gas. Put our flask here, like so. If we add some hydrochloric acid. And obviously any molarity will do. We add some universal indicator solution. And you can tell the kids or the teacher what colour this is going to change to. Yeah, that's a good question. So what colour what will that go? Yeah. So if we add it in. Cool. Fill up a syringe with about 10 mils of water. Mm -hmm. We just need to attach this onto yep. our syringe there. Inject the water into the flask. Yep. Right, solution's going yep. up and it's changing from red to blue. Oh, wow. But when Sue tries it for herself, things don't go quite to plan. Yeah, I can't get my thing, my bung won't go in. It is quite a tight fit. That's a very tight fit. That will, that will not fit. <laughs> Can we turn? Yeah, do you you could actually up? grease it if you're having a bit of trouble. Just fill up the syringe. And then I'll just, um, just, in, just go for inject it. Just inject these. Just inject. Oh, we've got a problem. Something's not happened there. <laughs> My experiments always work. Not Be honest, Sue, it's pathetic compared to Simon's one. Mm. <laughs> Take your blue thing with you then. <laughs> it is, it's pathetic, isn't it? It is. It's pathetic. <laughs> you are going to die. You are going to work. You do not defy me. Okay, so let's have another go yes, then. Let's put it in. But off now, inject. There we go. Well done. Thank you. I think that is something that before I would feel confident showing it to kids, the you know, to demonstrate in front of a class, I think I would have to have four or five goes at myself. Having seen Sue win through with the fountain experiment, Simon teaches Julia some glass bending moves. We're just going to make a simple bend for sort of like the start off for a delivery tube. Yeah. Score it with a glass cutter, pushing it away from ourselves. We just there we go. Perfect. And then we should start to see... With her newfound abilities, Julia will be able to make equipment to order and save money in the process. That's brilliant. That's great for a first try. Stand back and let you Sue and go. Julia are getting some top flight training specially tailored to their needs. But science learning centres around the country carry out regular professional development courses for science technicians. They even teach people how to cope with the dreaded Van der Graaff generator. Personally, I hope not the Van de Graaff, my least favourite bit of equipment. Right, so now we're coming to the dreaded Van de Graaff. Now, but really the Van de Graaff's a pretty safe piece of equipment. But if you've got any heart problems, you shouldn't really use mm. it. Um, if you've got any medical implants, you shouldn't use it, like cochlear implants or pacemakers okay. or hearing aids even, then that can still damage them. So what we'll do is we'll just start it off. Okay. Yeah. So it does sting, but it's not... Oh. Yeah. It's not too bad. No. Science demonstrating so calls for do? a bit of creativity. And Simon is never short of neat ideas to make things more visual. I think it's working. <laughs> Using the pie dishes is actually quite a nice mm. way of doing it. So if we... Oh, some keep on coming off. So if you want to discharge me with a stick... What, touch you anywhere? Yeah, touch me anywhere. And then if I let go, I shouldn't be sparked. There we go. Can we have Julia up? Go on, Julia. Now, I want you to stand on the box. Now, we always have a box or a tray or a piece of polystyrene just mm. to make sure you're off the ground. Yeah. And I want to put... You put one hand on there, and then... Can so I just go like that? Yep, yeah, and then if you take your hand off, there's, there's no sparks. Just touching the fluorescent tube to the, you can already see, even before mm. we've touched it, how that's already starting to flicker on and off. What you can do, which is a nice little trick to do, is actually just draw the light up with you. It's, it's amazing, it's incredible. Oh my 
golf. It's been a hugely successful day of learning and surprises. New skills have been acquired and old fears have been demolished. But Simon isn't finished yet. He still has one more surprise for Sue and Julia. So, how did you feel today's gone? I think it's been absolutely brilliant. I've really enjoyed myself. Yeah. And have you, have you felt you've learned anything? Which is the most important thing, probably. Yeah, because I mean, Van der Graaff was excellent. Yeah. I love the whoosh bottle that showed us at the beginning, and the ammonia fountain. I forget. And a lot do you feel you well. feel more confident in performing um, chemistry yeah. demonstrations? Yes, I do. Yes. And Julia, how have you felt today? Yeah, I've gone? enjoyed the um, the soldering and the, the glasswork. And they're things you've never tried no, before. No, that's right. So that's that's really good. I can, back and use them at school. Mm, oh yeah. yeah. And did you also feel a bit more confident performing demonstrations? As a part of a team. Part of a team, that was fine, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I need you to, well, both of you there to do be something. Some payoff, but there is, such a lovely there is, day. there is. I've got a few things I want you to do when you go back to school. Okay. I want Julia to show her show soldering skills to you. And the other thing I want you to do, and this is both of you, I want you to put on a demonstration circus. Okay. Back in school for a group when? of students. When? With, well, hopefully within the next week or so. Just have to go away and think of what we can do. Mm. Oh, that'd be great. Okay. I've had a lovely day. It's been really good to meet you. Thank you good. very much. And it's been very nice having you both. Good. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you. One week later, and back at Manor School, Sue and Julia are well into the old routine. As promised, Julia teaches Sue how to solder electrical equipment. But unfortunately, she hasn't yet plucked up the courage to demonstrate in front of the class. Sue, however, hasn't lost her bottle. What she doesn't know is that Simon Quinnell is eavesdropping on her show. I've got a bottle. Then, didn't it? <laughs> if you want to come and feel this, you'll feel it's hot, but it's not maybe as hot as what you think it would be. A bit warm. A bit warm. Yeah, so she's taking warm, it around yeah. the room now, which is really good. So I'm actually going to put this to one side now. <laughs> That's a nice touch. She's going to come back to that later. Uh, we're, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to do something called the methane bubbles. So for this, I need Mrs. Walton. And Mrs. Walton is going to put her safety glasses on and going to wash her hands. So what I'm going to do is I'm not going to do a very big a very big one, we'll do a little one. That's it off. Right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to bubble that through there. That's good. She's working with the teacher now to actually do the methane stand. bubbles experiment. Stand with them at arm's length and lean back. Okay. Again? Is it warm? Feels warm. Do you remember me saying the bottle? Should we have a look at the bottle, see what's happened to the bottle? What is the stuff in the bottle? In here? Yeah. What do you think it is? Is it the um, gas that you put in, the liquid you put in before? How, do you think that would be possible that I could still have the liquid left? Probably not, no. Probably not. Why not? <laughs> um, because it was burnt and you um, drained most of it out. I did. Yeah, that's right. So what, what are the products of combustion? Yes, Johnny? It could be carbon dioxide at the bottle. Yeah. And? And... Hydrogen. Hydrogen. No, not hydrogen, because that would have been burnt up. Um. Yes! Oxygen. <laughs> <laughs> water. Water, yes, it's water. So, in actual fact, this is really a mini cloud that we've made in here. That was really nice. Now, I want to volunteer. Right, Stefan, I want you to get hold of this. Put it on there. It's wherever we stop our hands. Sue is going great guns, but here comes the old enemy, the Van de Graaff generator. So here comes the Van de Graaff. So have you got hold of that, Ben? Um, might work today, but it's a little bit damp. It's got quite a bushy hair, so it might not work. I'm going to turn you on, and then we'll just wait. Don't let go. Now, it might take a few moments for this to work. <laughs> Can you feel anything, Ben? Um, no. Nope. <laughs> ben? Yeah? I think I'm going to give up on you, Ben. Oh, that's nice. Do you feel anything happening at <laughs> all? Yeah, what she should try now is really? trying yeah. to put the cake tins on top of the Van de Graaff, because that should work. Van de Graaff on. 
<laughs> I think, I think I need to... The thing is, if it hasn't worked with one student, it's so, unlikely to work with another one. Let's give it so she tries... See, the van de Graaff's going on a bit too long now. That's the only problem. Well, she's not no, getting no, flustered, no, which is a good thing, because when things do go wrong, some people will get flustered and worry about it. Ah, here we go. <laughs> there we go. And that is basically what should happen on your head. And thank you very much. Thank you. It's time for Simon to spring his final mm -hmm. surprise. That was a nightmare. <laughs> because if I was doing it properly. Hello. What on earth are you doing here? <laughs> Go away. <laughs> <laughs> so, how do you think it went? Um, I think I burbled. I didn't think you did. I think you handled most of it really, mm. really well. I thought the Van de Graaff was excellent. Considering I didn't ever, ever want to do the Van de Graaff, and I've now volunteered to get all the kids back and we'll do it one lunch time. And I really so enjoyed doing that. So you've got over your worries about using yeah, something like the Van de Graaff? Oh, because it's always, the thing is, it always seems so temperamental. But even today, even though it's a really damp, awful day, I think it worked very, very well. It did. I felt while, while I was mm. watching it that the Van de Graaff went on for a bit yeah. too long. That after the second child yeah. trying on the head, I would have just yeah. said, Yeah, I think quit. the problem was, was because I, I, um, the teacher has a clock up there, and you were I was to. very conscious of the fact that I've got time to fill. Well lovely, done. Lovely to see you again. You nice to see you. That was a bit of a shock. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well done. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Over the last week, Sue and Julia have gone from competent technicians to super technicians. Following Simon's course, they are now ready to face the challenges of the modern classroom. If you want to know more about professional development for science technicians, then take a look at the Teachers TV website.